Hey, happy 2023. Thanks for joining me. I decided in the new year I'm going to finally use my given name, Regina. It does mean queen, by the way, so I think it's about time. So hi, Regina here from Tarot and Time. I'm here with your month ahead, month of January 2023, Tarot and Astrology reading. So those of you who are new, I'll let you know how it works. Those of you who have been joining me, thank you so much. Um, I started this channel in 2020 when we were in COVID and really didn't have much choice on how to do readings because we couldn't do them in person. So I don't have a lot of followers, but the ones that do, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate it. So I'm here. What I usually do is uh, start off with a astrology report, give you an idea of what to expect this month ahead, what energies are available. Now, if you don't want to listen to all of that, you can jump ahead. The piles are timestamped below, so feel free. But I do encourage you to listen because it's pretty helpful information and it's going to tie into the reading also. So what do we need to know this new year, right? Well, we talked about last month how the cards of the year this year are the chariot, about moving forward, overcoming obstacles, trusting our intuition because the chariot is ruled by the moon. And so trusting feeling, trusting our bodies. And then the other card being the tower, which is kind of that lightning bolt of, wow, anything can happen. Um, divine insight, divine change. So following and feeling and allowing the change to make us better and make our journey better and make uh, this world a better place for everyone. So with that being said, let's talk about the chart for the new year. So I have, I'm just taking a peek when at the, as the clock strikes midnight on New Year's, we're going to have the sun obviously in the sign of Capricorn as we do every New Year's Eve. Um, we're going to have the moon in the sign of Taurus. So we have the sun and the moon in earth signs, okay? So we can definitely get a lot accomplished. We can build this year. Um, we just have to be careful not getting too stubborn or um, stuck in the mud kind of energy. So there's that. Um, but, but I like to think of it as Capricorn is so grounding and can, is so career focused and so foundation of your life focused that this is a great time to launch this new year with that energy as, as we do every year. But with the moon and this beautiful sign of Taurus also, a sign ruled by Venus, a sign of value and beauty and ruling it has to do with relationships. Now, Libra is the rising sign for the new year, and Libra is also ruled by Venus. So we have a lot of Venus energy going on. So we can expect a lot going on with our relationships in general, um, relationship with self, relationship with work, relation, love relationships, all of those things. Um, the moon is very close to the planet Uranus, which is the tower card, the lightning bolt of anything's possible. So new things can come in out of the blue. So envision them being great things. Envision them being financially very successful for you. But envision it being people of value coming into your life, people that you can have long-term relationships with. Now, we also have this really cool um, conjunction going on. And so not only is the sun in the sign of Capricorn, but 13 degrees away, we have Mercury, the planet of communication, Venus, the pl planet of love, self-love, relationships, balance, and Pluto, the planet of transformation, change, death and rebirth. It rules sex and all those deep emotions. They're, they're, they're working together as one. They're really close together and they're in the sign of Capricorn, okay? So what's going to happen is the sun is going to get closer and closer and pass over that conjunction. So there should be a lot of light being shined on thing on those areas, communication, travel, love, relationships, and intense change. So again, please envision that change for the highest and best. So lots of Capricorn energy, lots of Earth energy, and we, what else can I tell you? Okay, let's kind of just jump over. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look week by week. You know that I post my, my fancy little astrology reports week by week for you, so you have kind of a simple guide to each day. 
Um, I hope that those are helpful to you. Um, I'd love suggestions if you have any, so feel free to comment. So we're going to start off the new year, the first week in January, January 2nd, and it's a full moon week, and it is full moon fever. Okay, we know we have that conjunction with Venus close to Pluto and Mercury. So, so this can be hot and heavy. This can be exciting. This can be spicy. Um, this can be very interesting time. Also, we know that we have just moved into Mercury retrograde. So uh, Mercury's in there. We're gonna, basically, we're going to be revisiting this time period three times over. So you're, again, there's another video out there on YouTube on Mercury Retrograde more in detail. I encourage you to listen to it. Make the most out of this really amazing time. Now, this is a great time for reflection. And I love retrogrades because I'm able, I usually am able to catch patterns of behavior that I have or thought processes that come back up or situations that are similar that happen because Mercury will go over the same degrees that it was at on different dates. Um, so it, there's really an opportunity to find out things, to learn about yourself. So take that, take that opportunity. Don't look at it as scary. Look at it as a really cool opportunity for things to be revealed to you. Okay, so going into this first week, full moon and cancer on the 6th, which is Friday. And we all know everybody gets crazy with the full moon. So let's use that energy passionately. Let's use that energy um, exciting moving into our first our first month of the year. So full Cancer Moon, I pulled this Moonology card on it and it says a personal issue reaches resolution, full moon and Cancer. Okay, now we know Cancer is a water sign. We know Cancer is the crab. We know Cancer has to do with the home. It's also it's ruled by the moon, right? And we know the chariot card is one of our cards of the year, ruled by the moon. So there's lots of moon energy starting us off. And sometimes moon energy can make us a little moody. So be aware that moods are high, not just for yourself. Okay, so um, get your moon water out the first week. Something covered in a window. If it's warmer, warm enough outside, you could leave it outside, but um, a window's fine. Put it out at the beginning of the week so that it gets the moon rays, charge up your water, okay? I know maybe it, it sounds silly, but it doesn't hurt to try. And we've got this beautiful energy of the full Cancer moon in a bottle. We can drink it, right? We can nurture ourselves. And Cancer's all about nurturing and comforting and mothering. And um, yeah, so why not? Okay, so Monday the Monday the second, bring on the intense change for the better because we know that Pluto is mixed in there. We know that change is in the air. Everybody's thinking about how they want to change this new year. So bring it on. Okay, um, Tuesday the third. Don't let your moods get you in trouble. All right. We know, let me just change my calendar date here. I'm looking at my astrology software. And the third, well, we know that it's going to be moody. We're getting close to that full moon. The moon's going to have moved into Gemini by then. Um, and Gemini can go a mile a minute. I'm a Gemini moon. You can tell. I'm do, 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 talk fast, move fast, mile a minute, Gemini moon. So, and that moon's going to get really close to the planet Mars. That's been in the sign of Gemini for what feels like forever now, but I think it's been like six months. Um, so Mars wants to take action. It wants to get things done. And we've got this moody moon going on. And we want to be careful that we're just not getting into arguments, okay? So just get things done. Mind your own business. Do what you want to do. Think about your goals, okay? Then we'll go into full moon fever on the 5th. And hey, honestly, if you can stay home, why not? Uh, full moon fever. Friday the 6th, go slow. Bask in the moonlight. We know how bright that moon shines when, um, when it's full. Okay, so by Friday the 6th, the moon will have moved into Cancer, right? It's, it's going to be the full moon. We're still going to be coming down off of that. And then we're going to move into a Cancer to Leo weekend. 
So it's a sexy weekend if you choose your words wisely, okay? Just choose your words wisely, speak with kindness, take a deep breath before you speak, and things could go really well for you. It could be a really beautiful weekend. Now, there's a couple other things I wanna say before we move on. Um, there's a the conjunction that we were talking about all the Mercury, Pluto, Venus together, and then the sun coming into that also, is opposite a point called Lilith, our rightful rage, our rightful scream, our rightful howl. And so I wrote down howl at the moon. This is a good time like to really, it, it not so much arguing with others, but just airing it out, right? Like wolves howl, it's actually a form of communication with each other and they howl and it's a release. And so find your howl, okay? Even if it's like driving down the road and give, letting off a good scream, great time to do that. Happy full moon week that week. Okay. So we'll move into, oh, and during the week of 1-2, uh, Venus will move into Aquarius. So that happens right at the beginning of the week on Monday the 2nd. So Venus, again, the planet of relationships, the planet of love and all the beauty, into this wild and rebellious and innovative and creative and genius and wow sign of Aquarius, okay? Don't be afraid to be your, your, your unique self in your relationships, okay? Especially if you personally have Venus in Aquarius. You have to live your life the way that you want to. You're not gonna be able to follow the norms that other people do. Your relationships may look different than other people. And so Venus in, in Aquarius, this time period is a great time to think about what works, right? Like I know for myself, I need a lot of time alone. And that's okay if I explain it clearly. It's not because of any reason except that I need a lot of time alone. Okay, heavy Scorpio. So don't be afraid to be your unique self in your relationships. Now we move into the week of 1-9 through 1-15. And we're going to start out on the 9th with the moon in Leo. Now, I'm just going to move my computer screen ahead here. January 9th, moon in Leo, and it's going to be opposite Saturn. Now, Leo is like, let's do have a great time, big time, lots of fun. And Saturn is like, here's the rules. Have you taken care of everything? Have you finished your work? So I wrote down for the ninth, make your work fun. Find a way. Find a way to do it and do it with joy. Now, on Tuesday the 10th, the moon will move into Virgo. You can make a lot of plans, but don't push ahead, okay? Just make some lists, make some plans. On the 11th, you can make a great list of what needs to change, okay? Mars is going to go direct on Thursday the 12th, so it's going to finally start to move out of the sign of Gemini. And that'll be a relief to all of us Geminis out there. Although I got to tell you, I've been super productive. I don't know about you, but Mars is that oomph. And us Geminis were getting whacked with it for almost, I think it'll be almost seven months by the time it goes direct on the 12th. So pay attention to details and you might just get lucky. Sounds good. You might even want to buy a lottery ticket. You might want to choose your numbers very specifically. On February, uh, February, January 13th, Friday, actions speak louder than words. And we head into a Libra to Scorpio weekend, okay? So Libra's natural tendency is to like everyone else or can't always like, can't always like advocate for themselves sometimes or, um, so please don't forget yourself over the weekend, okay? Please others, but don't forget yourself, okay? Please. And then it's going to move into Scorpio. And so this beautiful intensity of Scorpio, use it for passion. Have a great time. Um, if you're dating or spending time with someone you love, make it spicy. Enjoy it, okay? Now we'll move into the week of January 16th through January 22nd, and we're moving into a new moon week, an Aquarius new moon week. We also have the sun moving into Aquarius. So things are really going to be shifting this week. So Monday the 16th, we have some uh, red alert for past relationships showing up. 
let me just look at that chart right now. So Monday the 16th, the moon in Scorpio is going to be conjunct together with the, the uh, transiting south node, which is that cup that holds everything that ever happened to you and often brings people in from the past. In the sign of Scorpio, which um, can also be like uh, ancestors, those kind of things also, but just um, pay attention to what comes up because I got the impression looking at the chart this day that you really need to show the universe what you have learned. And someone had said to me the other day that they felt that the universe sends you repeated um, situations where you have had to draw a boundary to see if you, to, to keep that muscle strong, to see if you have learned, to see if you know how, if you really mean it this time. So watch how you're feeling, watch who shows up around the 16th. It's also Mercury retrograde. I find things, people show up, information shows up and really show the universe what you've learned by your response to it. Okay. On Tuesday the 17th, I hope that you have your moon water out by now to get some of those rays of the Aquarius new moon coming up the end of the week. Again, that jug can be inside, covered, ideally. And um, yeah, just really just let it sit there. You're welcome to write some wishes for the new moon. Great time for planting seeds of wishes. I like to put that underneath the jug of water. Let it infuse into the water. So on Tuesday the 17th, finish up stuff so you can have some fun this week because we're going to, the moon's going to move into Sagittarius, which is about fun. Uh, Mercury is going to go direct and we're going to feel some relief. So get things done on Tuesday the 17th so you can maybe goof off a little if you can this week. Mercury goes direct on the 18th and it'd be really interesting to see what came up during the Mercury retrograde. Now, when, when you listen to the Mercury Retrograde video, you'll hear me talk about how you still want to pay attention afterwards up into the beginning of February because then Mercury goes back over that ground that it was already over twice before. So you're going to see some closure. You're going to get some um, relief, some reconnections, some reunions, some um, redos, some release, um, some reestablishing yourself, uh, reviewing, all those RE words, okay? Now, we have, I wrote Wednesday the 18th, goof off a little. Thursday the 19th, simple fun. Don't make any big plans yet. Friday the 20th, things will go as they go. Just try to adapt. There's a lot of Aquarian energy. Aquarians, predictably unpredictable. Okay, so that's just the way it is. Don't try to fight it. You're not going to win. So just try to adapt as you can. Now, by the weekend, Uranus is going to go direct, which is good news because Uranus rules Aquarius. So it might as well be functioning um, direct while we're in its sign. Okay, it's already a little wonky enough, um, unpredictable, and um, anything's possible. So yeah, I'm a little happy Uranus is going direct. Okay, Friday the 20th, like I said, things will go as they go. The weekend will be the Aquarius new moon weekend. Anything is possible. Envision it, all the amazing possibilities. Let's keep it in the positive and let's keep it, um, those things that show itself to us, it's like the tower card. Sometimes things just have to be revealed and moved through. Okay, so interesting uh, new moon week ahead for the 16th through 22nd. We move into the 23rd to the 29th, and we are starting off on the 23rd. Let's see, where is the moon on the 23rd? Let me check my computer here. I have this really wonderful program called Time Passages that I use in all my readings, all my sessions. So the moon will still be in Aquarius on Monday, okay? Um, and it's going to be really close to a lot of other planets. It's got one, two, three, four planets in Aquarius, the sun, the moon, Saturn, and Venus. And it's conjunct together with Pluto and Capricorn. So basically, bottom line, there's a lot of energy right there. It's hitting one, one area of your chart very hard. So if you feel like things are like extreme in one area, yeah, 
They are. There's five planets sitting in one of your houses, okay? So um, if you'd like to talk more about that, you can feel free to comment below with your birthday and time and place, and I can give you an idea of where that's hitting. Also, feel free to book at tarotandtime.com for one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions. Okay, so are your relationships aligned to your needs or others' rules? Are your relationships aligned to your needs or to other rules? People's rules, countries' rules, uh, your parents' rules, because Saturn's there and it's in the sign of Aquarius and Saturn doesn't want things to change and Aquarius wants to change everything. So you got to look at what 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 is true to you and what do you need to do differently. On Tuesday the 24th, Venus will be conjunct Saturn. So Venus is like the soft gentleness to yourself, the love, the beauty, and Saturn can be a little bit strict. And so don't be too hard on yourself and pay attention to the thoughts that are coming up around the 24th. Now, on Wednesday the 25th, we want to start daydreaming and softening. And let's see, let me just take a peek here again. We have the moon moved into the sign of Pisces, and it's going to be close together with the planet Neptune. And the right around this time, Venus is going to start to make its way into the sign Pisces also. So there's kind of this softening coming in, okay? The 26th could be a little moody. Old memories can surface up. Just remember that this too shall pass, okay? 27th, we will have the moon in Aries, and I wrote down, let's get back to me, okay? So you might just start to pull out of some of that moodiness and uh, get focused and clear again. It's going to be a beautiful Taurus weekend as Venus moves into the romantic sign of Pisces. I wrote down Venus um, to the romantic slash delusional sign of Pisces. Okay. So yes, Pisces can be all that beauty and warm feeling, but it also can be cloudy and unclear. Okay. So enjoy, enjoy, but beware. Enjoy, but no things are really clear when it comes to love right now. Taurus weekend, Taurus is ruled by Venus. It's the finer things of life weekend. So enjoy it. Um, maybe a good romantic movie. Maybe you, you plan something special with someone you love. Great time for a massage, great time for shopping, great time for great meals, and um, any version of that, even if that's just like at home and just trading each other a massage or um, trading a friend a massage, anything like that, that is a perfect example of a Taurus weekend. Now we're going to, actually we stopped there because we're going to go into February, and so we'll talk about the last couple days in January next month um but what we're going to do now is we are going to jump into our card reading i told you that was a lot of information and that's why it being broke broken down into the weekly segments along with the astrology forecast visual um i think is helpful i hope you do too i'm using this beautiful oracle deck for our piles it's called the wild whiskers oracle deck I love it. We have it in stock in Kent. And so for pile number one, I picked the warrior wolf. And it says intelligence, instinct, protection, fierce hunter and protector. Be the guardian and guide of my journey. Pile number one. Pile number two, we have the clever crow. I've also been stocking her art in our store. Wow. It's really beautiful. So clever crow, mystery judgment, clairvoyance, observer, observer of birth, life, and death. Teach me creativity and destructive magic. Interesting. Pile number two. And pile number three, we have the orderly owl. And it says mastery, logic, discernment, Solitary watcher of the night, give me a sacred vision in the moonlight. Go ahead, pick your pile, whichever one jumped out to you first, and let's get started. Okay, pile number one, this beautiful warrior wolf card. Gorgeous. 
Intelligence, instinct, protection, fierce hunter and protector. Be the guardian and guide of my journey. Okay. I have a bunch of decks here that I'm working with. And let's jump right in and I'll explain to you which cards I have. I have not looked at any of these cards yet. We are talking about January 2023. We're going to start with an overall general reading for you for the month of what you need to be aware of. Then we'll break it down week by week to see what's going on, where the energy is for the month for you. Um, and yes, yeah, so let's jump right in. So we're starting off. We have the relative tarot deck here. Um, I have the original box here, actually. It came with the Oracle and the tarot deck. This is a limited edition. But I do stock the relative tarot itself in Kent. And here we go. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, this is funny. I often get the um, tarot and the Oracle mixed up by accident. And so you got an Oracle, and it was meant to be a tarot. But it's called Heating. Look at her. She was actually someone's relative. One of Carrie Paris's fans sent this picture in and Carrie made this into this beautiful card called heating. So she's heating this call, right? She's moving forward when right here next to the warrior wolf, the howl. Beautiful way to start off here. All right, let's see what the heart of the matter is in this, the month ahead. And we have the standing stone card. And this is from the Green Witch Tarot deck. And I have to tell you, this has become one of my favorite decks recently. I, I, I never see it coming, which ones are really going to be my favorite. And so here's the Green Witch Tarot. And yeah, I love it. So you have this beautiful, ju uh, I'm sorry, uh, Justice card, although this is called the Standing Stone. And it says, harm none. Okay. So this is card number 11. We would call this a two in numerology. So it has implies relationships as Libra rules the house of relationships in astrology. And so this is the heart of the matter, the standing stone, harm none. Okay. And that none includes yourself. Let's see what we have supporting the heart of the matter. We have the seven of air, eucalyptus. This is coming from the herb crafters tarot, another one of my absolute favorites. And so seven of air, this would traditionally be called the seven of swords. And I just love that there's, they're distilling eucalyptus here. This book is open. You can almost smell the eucalyptus. And so seven is the number of the year in 2022 or 2023, um, because 2023 equals the number seven. So this is the card of number of the year, seven of air, seven of clearing the air, seven of getting clear and journaling and of learning and of transformation, really, because they're distilling these plants, right? making them into an essential oil. All right. So this is what's supporting the heart of the matter. So this could be your studies. This could be um, your decisions, the boundaries that you have made, and to focus on the things that you want to focus on. Let's see what the foundation card of the reading is. I'm working here with the Elemental Wisdom Tarot. Another great one. And your foundation card of the reading is the King of Swords. He looks pretty no-nonsense to me. You know, I was really feeling like um, I kind of got the message this morning to give it to them straight. That was the that was the message I got for this reading. Give it to them straight. And he looks like the kind of guy that's going to give it to you straight. Okay, he's not going to take he's not going to mess around. He's not going to accept any ill treatment. He's going to make great boundaries and he's going to make choices, okay? So, there's something here about there's some a heating the call, something maybe that you've been called to for a while now that's going to empower you because it's coming in next to this wolf. 
It's something that you owe to yourself, this balance, no harm done, that you can harm none, which means yourself also. By ignoring that call, you would be harming yourself. Here into your, your, into your details of your life, and he is here to lend support to you to get things done. He rules big business, and he is the king of boundaries. Now, behind the scenes, what's been going on a little bit more in the past? We have the green man, which is the fool card in the green witch tarot. Now, it looks like they're having a fun time down there. There's some music and dancing and playing. And this huge green man, this father nature kind of energy. And this is in the background. So you might have been like kind of goofing off or having more fun in the background. And this is kind of showing me that it's time to get down to business. The ace of air, nettle. So in the background, Ace of Earth, Ace of Pentacles. We know that nettles are used to build iron in the blood and they grow as a weed. They're kind of misunderstood, but they're actually really nourishing. And we know that nettles ha are really about boundaries, right? They'll sting you. So it's there in the background. Now let's see what's moving into the future position for you. We have the Two of Swords here from the Relative Tarot. So she is kind of in self-protection mode a little bit. Um, let's, let's come back to that one. And the page of coins, the page of pentacles. So what I'm kind of getting from this is that there's a need for you to heed the call of whatever's been calling to you, right? Well, I, I think it's like some kind of schooling or some kind of project that you've really been wanting to work on, but you've been kind of distracted probably with self-care of others or trying to please others, or trying to balance everything out. And then also like trying to balance out fun and where the, where the proper position for fun is in your life. Like we need it, but like, are you really around supportive people? There's something here about learning how to make boundaries. There's something here about clearing the air. And there's something here about really going inward. And so, you know, Mercury retrograde is a t great time for introspection and for, and we're going into, you know, January and up here in New England, it's cold and it's a great time to just kind of go inward. Okay. And that's okay for you. And it might feel new. There's something new coming out of this, this page of pentacles, page of coins. I feel like there's some new project that you're going to be taking on, some new way of new financial endeavor, okay? So this is your overview for the month. I'm going to roll a few dice and see what we've got going on there. And we have Mercury in the sign of Leo in the third house, which is uh, Gemini's house, the house of communication, also ruled by Mercury. So there's something here. Leo is all about healthy selfish. Leo needs to be heard and be seen. And this is a time for you to look at, are you feeding that properly? Are you hearing and seeing yourself properly? Are you giving yourself that time? to do what it is that you need to do, this expression. There's some expression that needs to come out of you that's been ignored for way too long. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to kind of move over onto this January calendar. And oh my goodness. I mean, just look at this January calendar. Look how beautiful that picture is. This cat this, this is uh, Llewellyn's uh, Magical Mystical Cat Calendar for 2023. I have a couple left in stock. And the artist this year is Chiro Marchetti, who is a famous um, tarot creator. So you've got this beautiful month here. We know that we're, we have two, um, as always, we have a full moon and a new moon. We know that the full moon... The beginning of the month is in cancer, a personal e issue reaches resolution, and we know that the new moon is towards the end of the month, and we have bring love into the situation, new moon in Aquarius, okay? So we're going to keep these cards kind of here alongside this calendar, and I'm going to pull 
cards for each week. One, two, three, four. We're going to call it four weeks for January, okay? So I'm going to pull one card for each week, or two cards for each week. Bear with me here. We'll get more into detail. We'll just throw some charms onto the calendar, see where the busy times are. And it looks like we're going to use the Green Witch and the Relative. We never know if we're going to get the Oracle or the Tarot, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to do the charms over here first. Got this big charm bowl. Put this over that calendar. And we'll end with the letters too. You guys like the letters too. Okay. So it looks like you have a pretty, well, the beginning of the week, the first week, we have a toy soldier and the letter D and the word royalty. And we have a lot going on the 5th of January. Okay. We have the letter J, we have the number one, we have like this little like gift. This is like a wine charm. Um, with a fox and an eraser. So I don't know if you have like a party or something going on on the 5th, but it definitely looks chock full. Uh, I would get, get dressed up, bring a present, show up. Saturday the 7th, we've got a bo open book and, and a little squiggly sign here on the 7th. So it looks like it's a pretty busy first week in January, okay? And let's see what your cards are. We have the two, this is the two of swords and the green witch relationships. We had this come, two of swords come up in your overall month also. So they are, it's interesting, he's got like a sickle here and there's two knives, two swords in that tree. And so there's two people and they're definitely like working hard together, communicating with each other. Okay. This is the first week along with the ritual card. Okay. So maybe there's some traditions that you have the first week. Maybe you're spending um, New Year's Day with family. Um, boundaries is the word. Um, treating yourself kindly. And um, yeah, just kind of being true to yourself. And something's changing for you. That's what I'm getting. Something's changing for you. Maybe the way that you look at your family situation or the way that you look at um, your traditions for New Year's, something like that. There's something shifting here. You may need some good boundaries. You may need to set some new ones with people. Now, the second week, we have this little motorbike here on uh, the 10th and the number six on the 13th. So not quite as busy of a week, a little bit quieter. And your card here is the Queen of Swords. She's kind of trimming things back. You know, the Queen of Swords, when I first started to do tarot, she kind of scared me a little bit. Um, she seemed very severe. Um, and I, I was afraid of embodying her. And now I think she's become my best friend. And so she is going to make the cuts where they need to be made. She's not going to allow any lack um, of discernment and attention to detail. Okay. And your other card for the second week is the Five of Wands from the Relative Tarot. Definitely looks like they don't want to hear what he's saying. Okay. So you may have to choose who you who you share things with. And there may need to be some cuts made in that area of who you're sharing because I don't think that they want to hear what you have to say. Now this third week we have a purple heart landed between the 16th and 17th and on the 18th we just have this little building. And so another little bit quieter week, although the Purple Heart fell on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, so maybe you have time off. Uh, maybe you can really honor that day. And we're starting off with the Ace of Cups, which is a cup of satisfaction and really beautiful. Okay, so really lovely. Enjoy. I hope you have that Monday the 16th off. And then you have the Hierophant here. 
And the Hierophant, you know, kind of feels like uh, going to church or just maybe having some, um, I don't know, I feel like it's like reflection on all the people that fought for freedom and all the people that were fighting for our freedom. I feel that kind of vibe. Uh, the Hierophant's also a pretty intense change and very, very powerful card. And so a lot of power and a lot of um, satisfaction, really, that week. Now, we're moving into what we're going to call the last week, which is the 22nd through 25th. And on the 25th, we have the Tree of Life symbol, and we also have this moose. Okay. And so that's on the 25th. Feels very... Um, powerful day for you on January 25th. And then January 28th, the word ambitious lying on it. And it's actually the Capricorn sign. So that Saturday, the 28th might be a very ambitious day for you. And let's see what you have for the week ahead. You have the King of Chalices or King of Cups. Got a big meal in front of them. Maybe you're going to have some company. Maybe you're going to cook up a storm on the 28th. And you have the Wheel of Fortune from the Relative Tarot, card number 10. It almost looks like a mirror, like an old photo framed. And so, um, what is he holding? Hmm. So the Wheel of Fortune, Sagittarius energy. And so I see kind of like, I don't know. It feels like a playfulness. Wheel of Fortune is really lucky and really fun and expansion. It's also surrendering to the, the cycles of life. And so, I don't know, I almost get the impression that you're going to have family in town or something. You're going to be really ambitious about it. But um, then you're going to kind of slow down afterwards. You're going to have some good memories and start really doing the things that work for you. That's what I'm getting. Okay. So, I hope that helps and gave you a little clarity. I'm going to pull some uh, letters here and we're going to be looking for, you know, words, names, initials, and this is for your overall month of January, 2023. I definitely have a QU, so we'll see if I can make queen and I've got a blank and I don't, do have an N. Do I have any E's in here? No, but I have the word Quinn. The name Quinn, Q-U-I-N or Q-U-I-N-N. -N, I have that. I have the word Bro, B-R-O. And let's see what else. This blank one can be whatever we want. Um, I have the word Mud. And I want you to be careful about not getting stuck in the mud because of the um, earthy energy of 2023. The word jar. And, oh, I have another R. And I'm not sure what to do with that. Hmm. Okay. Well, I could make the word... Hmm. All right. Well, I got a blank and an R. You can do what you want with it. I'm going to take pictures of this so you can see what you want to do. I got the name Quinn, the word bro, the word mud, jar, and a blank and an R. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great month ahead. Pile number two, the clever crow. How pretty. Mystery, judgment, clairvoyance, observer of birth, life, and death. Teach me creativity and destructive magic. Destructive magic. You think about the crows eating roadkill, right? Okay, so let's see what you need to know. 
this month ahead where this we're looking for overall themes here for the month for you then we'll break it down week by week to see what you need to know where the energy is uh, the busiest for the month i'm working with a few different decks here i have not looked at any of the cards yet and we are starting off with the six of water or six of cups this is called borage and this is from the Herb Crafters Tarot. This is one of my favorite decks. And so look how beautiful that is. I love that periwinkle color. There's so much joy. There's such a sweetness to this. Um, it almost feels like a champagne toast for New Year's and such comfort. Okay, so observing the comfort, observing the memories that you're making, um, really being present in them. Let's see what we've got going on in the heart of the matter. We have the defense card, and this is from the Relative Tarot, and I have the original set here. Um, I think this might have been when it was like on go... Um, Kickstarter. I think that's where I got this. Um, this is by Carrie Paris. This is a mix of a tarot deck and then there's an oracle deck. Um, I know the ones that we stock now just have the tarot deck, but this has the bonus oracle in it. This is, you know, these are pictures of her fans' relatives that they sent in. So this was an actual human, actual fans' relative, and here he is representing the defense card. Interesting that. This feels so peaceful and joyful, but there's like this defensiveness. And I was saying, allow yourself to be in the moment and enjoy this. So he's very guarded, okay? So this is coming up in the heart of the matter. And then the crow being the observer, right? So kind of observing our behavior where we get defensive. All right, let's see what we've got supporting the heart of the matter. And from the Green Witch Tarot, we have the Battle Wagon, which is the Chariot card, which is the card of the year, okay? 2023 equals the number seven. This is card number seven. This is from the Green Witch Tarot, and this has really become one of my favorites recently. You just never know what's going what's gonna to end up being your favorite. I didn't think this one would, but it sure has. Okay, so the Chariot. So the chariot ruled by the moon, being moved forward, pulled forward, overcoming obstacles. So it's kind of, you're overcoming this defensiveness. You are ready to move forward. You are ready to observe your behavior and move forward. Okay. Now let's see here. How many more cards? Yes. Okay. So we have one for your foundation coming up next. So let's see what we pick for your foundation card. And we have the Ten of Pentacles, also from the Relative Tarot. Now, this is a ten, so things are there's there's a change happening because we call a ten a one in numerology. Now, I like to think of this card. They remind me of the California Gold Rush. They remind me of sudden change of fortune. Okay, so this is coming in as your foundation card, this change, you are ready for it, you're ready for it like this. Okay, so behind the scenes, we have the sun card. It looks like nobody's home here. Okay, it's beautiful, but nobody's home. I almost was getting, it's coming in next to the six of water, and I was kind of getting that same feeling, like nobody's home. Like this experience is happening, yet no one's really, like you're not there to feel it. Um, so make sure that you check out if you're checked out, okay? We also have the three of coins. This is from the beautiful Elemental Wisdom Tarot deck. And so this is a three of earth setting out his beautiful work of art on top of this building for all to see. All right. Reminds me of Spain. So coming in next to the defense card, defense card, three of coins. Okay. So maybe there's something you've been working on long and hard. Maybe you have your reasons why you've been distracted or not available. That's changing. 
Let's see what as we move into the future position. We have the nine of coins from the elemental wisdom. There's definitely plenty here. She's holding this huge hawk, it looks like. A huge coin behind her. So there's definitely been a payoff. There's definitely comfort there. And we have the awakening card. This is from the beautiful Herb Crafters Tarot. Um, this is Tulsi. This is the judgment card traditionally. So judgment is ruled by Pluto. It's related to the sign Scorpio, intense change. This is awakening. Tulsi is holy basil that is worshipped in India because it's so known for its powers. Okay, we've got some prayer beads there. And so there's a big shift. It's almost like you're awakening to maybe your behavior, what things have, were like last year. Maybe you were really working a lot. Maybe you weren't actually showing up. Maybe you just felt like an observer. Maybe you didn't feel emotionally connected. And that's changing now. Okay, you're ready. That's changing. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into... We're going to leave this here and we're going to break down the weeks. We're going to call, call it four weeks in the month of January. We're going to pull two cards for each week. First, we're going to throw some charms onto the calendar. So I've got this gorgeous calendar here. This is Llewellyn's Magical Mystical Cats. Let me make sure you can see this. Magical Mystical Cats calendar. And the wonderful Chiro Marchetti was the artist for this. And I love it. And so here we go. We're going to throw some charms onto here. We also have next to the calendar this card for the full moon in Cancer. At the beginning of the month, a personal issue reaches resolution. This is from the Moonology deck. And then towards the end of the month, we have the new moon in Aquarius. Bring love into the situation. Okay, so we're going to leave those on the side here of the calendar. Let's throw some charms. We've got a whole bunch of them in here. Let's see what, what falls where. All right, some mist, some white wine. But boy, did you get a lot the first week of January. All right, we're also going to work with some letters and some astro dice. Oh, so let's do a general astro dice throw across your month ahead spread, okay? So we have the moon in the sign of Libra in the eighth house, Scorpio's house, okay? So there's a lot of attention to your feeling, your fluid body, your emotions, especially when it comes to your relationships. You're ready to start showing up and being more present, okay? Eighth house is Pluto's house of transformation, and it landed here on this uh, Tulsi awakening card, which is also Pluto. Okay, so you're ready for a huge shift in that regard. You're ready to show up. You're ready to not show up to the situations that aren't aligned to you, but you are ready for um, new things. And I just, I think that your days of being the observer are shifting into being more emotionally available. Okay, now when I look over here at all these charms, I see that week one, you got a lot. You've got a moon and a circle and a little elephant and the word live or the word live. Um, we've got trees of life and crowns and shells and wheelbarrows and lots of stuff. And there's even stuff that kind of fell off of the top of January, almost like it came in from December into January. So there's a lot. Maybe you've been going to a lot of Christmas parties. Maybe you've been a lot of, um, lot of activity, a lot of work, a lot of play. And like I said, you maybe not always feeling like you were really emotionally showing up in it. This says, great, you're ready for a party. So there's definitely that energy coming through the end of the holiday, New Year's Day, right through there. Then it, it quiets down. Okay. So let's pull a few cards. Let me grab a few decks here. We're going to pull two cards for each week. Like I said, we're going to call it four weeks. So bear with me here while I pull a few cards for you. Let's see what you need to know these, these weeks ahead here. Let's, we're going to work with the Herb Crafters and the Elemental Wisdom. And so I'm very curious to see what the cards are going to be for that first week since it was so busy. All right. 
We have the Five of Earth, Slippery Elm. Slippery Elm is one of my favorite teas, um, throat coat tea. And um, it's just so sweet and so nourishing and just really makes things smooth. And here's this like, it's interesting that this house looks vacant again. There's been a lot of like vacancy here, a lot of like emptiness, right? And so this is when you start looking at, are you showing up, right? And how can you show up in a more, a way that soothes you more, okay? Maybe, maybe you're ready to do like a dry January or something like that, okay? And just finding uh, more comfort, different fluids, and um, really establishing yourself and showing up in your relationships. We have the hermit here. Okay, and as I'm talking about showing up in relationships, he's he's off on his own with his bird. Um, interesting that she was off on her own with her bird, too. Okay, so when you're the only way you're gonna be able to show up the way you like to really emotionally connect is by making sure that you get this alone time too. So I think that maybe you haven't been giving yourself enough of this alone time or like showing up to places, but like not being emotionally connected because you're just trying to retreat into your alone time. Just take the alone time. Okay. Just understand that you need it. Okay. That's week one. Now week two was a lot quieter. And really the only thing that fell out here was this like, um, what's this called? Like a coat of arms or something. It's on between like the 12th and the 13th. And so let's see what your cards are for that week. We have the eight of air licorice. Okay. So there's a old gate opening. There's an old structure breaking down. It's the eight of swords. Um, traditionally, like what's not working for you, like freeing your mind, not feeling stuck, knowing that you're free. Um, licorice is a great tonic for the stomach. It helps with ulcers. It helps digestion, lowers blood pressure. There's like some relief here. And the seven of coins. Okay. She knows like all these coins are hanging above her. Like she's almost ready to grab them all and put them in her basket, but it's not quite ready. Okay, so some things are shifting. There's a lot of observation going on. Okay, then we go into the third week, and the only thing we have is this tree that fell on the 17th, and it fell upside down. Kind of reminds me of the hanged man. Okay, kind of like delay. I see you kind of going into like a more re resting, reflective inner period going in later in the month. But going in without guilt, going in because it's a choice. We have the devil card, which is Blackberry here. And I love this card. I think it's really cool. Um, so it's like temptation. Maybe you're going to make some diet changes. Maybe you're going to stop seeing yourself as the bad person for needing the alone time and start understanding that, you, that that's a need that your body has and start being a little bit more gentle and nourishing yourself in ways that work for you. Here's the seven of cups. So you got two sevens. Now remember, seven is the number of the um, year. This is seven of cups, which is a minor version of the chariot card. It's a lot of choices. Interesting how it's like almost like food and drink here. Everybody's thinking about their diet in the new year. So you got the seven of coins above the seven of cups. Just really get the impression that if you just like, you just need to be kinder to yourself and understand the dynamics of yourself and then things can line up more. I think as you take the time you need, then you can show up more successfully when you want to. Okay. So now we move into the third week and we have this really cool triangle with like some plants in it here. That was on the 22nd. And then really interesting at the bottom Oh, cool. At the bottom of the um, January calendar, you got an anchor. And then you've got this piece of black stone, which I'm not sure. I think this might be hematite, but it's a ground, whatever. It's black stone. It's grounding, right? So you got this like grounding with the anchor, grounding with the black stone, and then you got the four. 
And foreign numerology has to do with like resting, retreating, pausing. So I see that as the grounding force. There's a lot of parties and activities and stuff at the top. Okay. So just kind of settling down into that. Now for your last week, I've got the seven of water. So you just got the seven of cups twice. You had it for the week before. And now this final week, this is birch. And I got to tell you, like, I don't drink soda hardly ever, but if you offer me a birch beer, it's like, yes, I love birch beer. It's so sweet and delicious. But I remember like chomping on birch as a kid. So yeah, here's birch, seven of water, and it feels nourishing. It almost feels like a mocktail. And it's here down here on your towards the end of your month, along with this beautiful eight of cups. Okay, all these cups floating around her. It's just like she's swimming through the water. Might be a little bit hard to break some habits, but you can do it. Okay, so what else do I want to do here? Let's do some letters. And we're going to look for some names, words, initials, all that fun stuff. Let's see what we've got. Got the word about, A B O U T, and I've got the word letter uh, word five, F I V E, and what else? I have the word soup. I'm going to write, make the word land off of about. I feel like I'm playing Scrabble. And uh, I and an L, which could be like Illinois, or it could be L-I, Long Island. Okay. So Long Island, land, about five, and soup. Well, soup's always a great nourishing thing. You might want to give it a try. Five is a number of change. And you want to get grounded and clear so you can show up fully in your relationships month this month you're ready for the transformation it's here for you you no longer have to just be an observer or show up when you don't want to i get the impression that you've got a lot of work to do but when you do show up you can show up fully okay and i want you to really look at your diet this month and how you're nurturing yourself okay where you're being too restrictive or where you need to hone things in a little bit um, kind of going more inward towards the end of the month and really just making the best out of this january and this new year so thanks for joining me Pile number three, the orderly owl, mastery, logic, discernment. I love him. Have some of her art in stock too and can't. I love this owl. And it says, solitary watcher of the night. Give me a sacred vision in the moonlight. All right. So let's see what you need to know this big month of January ahead. The, I have not looked at any of these cards yet. I'm working with a few different decks. Let's see what you need to know for overall themes for the month of January. Then we'll go through and we'll break it down week by week, okay? So we're starting off here from the Elemental Wisdom Tarot. And, you know, I, I told you, I don't know if you heard me say earlier that when I did a pre-reading, it was uh, the message I kept getting was give it to them good. Give it to them straight. And I use some heavy hitter decks here, this being one of them. And one of the reasons I don't work with this deck a lot with clients is because the death card is so intense. And of course, what is what happens? That's the card that comes up first, okay? So this does not mean anyone's going to die. This does not mean as hairy as it looks, literally, okay? This is a card of transformation and change. And what I got 
previously, previous message I got as I was getting ready to film this video is that there is some intense change and I need to be really clear with you. And pile number three, I think that message was for you. Okay. Because you do have this intense death card coming up first of all. And this is about it. There is no, the old can no longer, it does not serve you anymore. Okay. And so here it is. Here's the change. Okay. And you're ready for it. And this is the natural process. And you are ready for this change to come into your life and you need to allow it. Okay. So this can bring about great results, allowing this change to happen and not fighting it. Okay. So you did get this owl that has mastery, logic, and discernment. Okay. So you've got this wisdom. You're ready. It says, um, give me a sacred vision, right? And the sacred vision is that there is, this is a time of great change for you. All right. So let's see what else you need to know. This is the heart of the matter. And we have the six of swords here. This is from the green witch tarot. Um, I've been saying this has become one of my favorites recently. Just never know which one's going to become your favorite. And this certainly has taken the lead lately. So the green witch and the six of anthems, I think is what they call it, but it's the six of swords. Okay. And here's this horse in this boat. And there seems to be the guy with him, with the horse, and he's just kind of looking forward and he's kind of like being pulled in. Okay. And so where are you being pulled into things? I always think of that Lyle Levitt song. If I had a boat, I'd go out on the ocean. And if I had a pony, I'd ride him on that boat. There it is. What do you really want to be doing? Do you want to be riding your pony on a boat? Or are you being drawn in to other people's crap? Okay. This is the time to get it in order. This is a time for the transformation to start. This is a time for you to start choosing you. This is supporting the heart of the matter. We have the lover's card. So we can only guess that this is in regards to love or to relationships or to choices, right? This is a Gemini card. And it's pretty clearly coming up as re relationship choices, okay? Then you need to look at it. You need to look at it and you need to really look at what is the really going on here. Because I find when the death card is involved, you have a choice. You have a choice to make the change or you have a choice to resist it. But either way, it's going to happen. Here's your foundation card, which is the Knight of Swords. And he's raring to go, ready to go, getting out of town. He's riding that horse, right? Here, he, here it was, here he goes, and he's getting out of town. There's some dysfunctional relationship that you're in that it's time to get the heck out of town. And this may be love, and this may be friends, and this may be work, but you know what it is, and I, I, I'm sure that you do. Now behind the scenes, we have the nine of earth, the apple. This is from the Herb Crafters Tarot. Another favorite. So this is like being resourceful and storing up and stocking up and, and all of that. And sometimes we stay in relationships because of this idea, right? Having to be uh, conservative or not know if, if we can make it on our own. There's the four of pentacles, same vibe, holding on. In the background. Okay, now we're moving into the future position. We have the two of wands and she's holding the world in her hands. Okay, she is ready. She It's not to say she's not scared. It's not to say that she's got it all figured out, but she's doing it. She's forming this relationship with her dreams, her desires. These are magic wands she's holding. Passionate, fiery. It's a two, so it's reflecting some kind of relationship and the relationship with self and the relationship with dreams and hopes and desires. And we have the temperance card, 
which this is called Camellia, which I'm not really familiar with, but I guess it's something to do with this tea ceremony. But it's temperance, which is ruled by Sagittarius, which is about freedom and expansion. Okay, it's a beautiful card. And so it's almost like you're going through this process. You're going through this ceremony. This is the time to advocate for you. There are these dysfunctional relationships that you have been caught up in. You have, like I said, you have a choice. You have a choice, but either way, the change is going to come. And honestly, you might want to choose to work with it instead of to resist it. Because a card of luck and blessings is showing up if you follow the process. Okay, I'm going to roll these dice and see what we get. Here's your overall month. And you have Mars, the planet of action, in the sign of Leo in the eighth house. Mars is also written as a symbol for man, for male. Okay, in the sign of Leo, the heartfelt, healthy, selfish, sign of Leo, of your joy, of your passion in the eighth house, which is Scorpio's house, which this death card is a representation of. Okay. There's intense change happening and you need to choose you. All right. So let's see what we have. We're going to go week by week now. We're going to do two cards for each week. We're going to call it four weeks in the month. We're going to work with these charms, this huge bowl of charms, and I'm going to throw these onto the calendar so we can see where, where there's more energy, what days are busier. Let's see what we've got. All right. So you have a nice, nice mix here. Um, looks like, I'm guessing you've been doing a lot of cooking maybe for, for family or for your partner or for, as the letter says, him. Okay, um, kind of going in with the first charm we come upon is an eraser on the second. So you may be, I don't know, maybe you've been fighting and you're trying to backtrack and clear things up. Maybe you're erasing some, um, maybe you're doing some New Year's resolution or something. So maybe you're erasing a few things from your diet. Um, but there, there, that's the leading energy of the month. The, so let me pull the cards first. Let's see which decks do we want to use. We're going to use the Green Witch and the Relative. So let's do that. We'll pull two cards for each week. Sometimes my Relative Tarot and my... Um, Relative Oracle get mixed together, but we'll see what we get. Okay. So that first week with the eraser, your cards are the Queen of Pentacles. She's got her acorn stored up. There's like no lack here. Okay. Queen of Earth. Starting off the new year with a Capricorn sun and a Taurus moon, all earth. And the six of pentacles, more earth. Okay, show us like, uh, let's play a song for you. So there's definitely this earthiness, really um, keeping it simple, the things that bring you joy. And not being caught up in the idea of lack. Okay. Now the second week, we've got a little bit more like joyfulness. We've got a palm tree on the ninth. We've got a castle on the 10th. We've got the sun on the 12th, along with some like lotus flower. Okay. So a little bit more, a um, little bit more upbeat and you've got the wild horse. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the wild hunt. And this is the tower card. Now this is quite the version of the tower card from the green witch tarot. And this is one of the cards of the year because it equal, it's card number 16, one and six equals seven. So the chariot and the tower are our cards of the year. Wow. This feels like, uh, like a, the story in the book of revelations in the Bible. Okay. There is like, <laughs> this is not something you can tame. Okay. This is like, I, I said wild horses at first, the wild hunt. 
along with the Queen of Wands. Um, yeah. Okay. It just a lot of intensity. Um, I just, there's a lot of intensity in your cards and I think there's a situation that you need to get out of. That's what I'm seeing. Okay. The third week we have this word protected and vulnerable. Okay. Two sides of the coin. Um, that's on Martin Luther King day. We have on the 18th, we looks like a little busier. We have a joker, a book and a circle on the 18th. On the 20th, we have a key. Okay. And the 21st, we have a little moose and a corkscrew. All right. So it looks like a little bit busier of a week. And let's see what your cards are for that week. And you have the, uh, the death card again, the Lord of Shadows. Okay. So that change is really by the third week, you should really know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, I want you to do some, um, I just want you to protect your energy. I'm not saying that you're, um, I'm looking at it just like energetically protection. Okay. So you may want to sage your house. You may want to call in your guides. Um, sometimes I will call in, I will, um, envision like fire breathing dragons or fire breathing, like lion statues on the four corners of my property. And to just to give the message of, of like, don't mess with me kind of energy. And that's what I see would be very good for you the week of the 15th through the 21st. You have the page of swords and he's kind of like doing a circus act with the sword. Watch your words and choose them really wisely that week. You don't want to start fights with angry people. Okay, now this final week, there's a there's a heart starting it off, a purple heart and a dime. And then you've got like a lot of activity on the 25th, 26th, a lot of um, saints, uh, a lot of Marys. Uh, this thing says patron of mothers help me. Got a lot of women energy around. Measuring tape a unicycle, a guitar. There's just a lot of like stimulation, which is hat on the 25th and 26th. So those are pretty intense days. And then a lot of these other charms kind of fell down into February. Like there's going to be a lot more there. So 25th and 26th, be, be aware. Um, be aware that there's a lot of, a lot of energy there. You've got the page of chalices, which is the page of cups. And she's like sitting by the, standing by this river and she's painting and she's got this fresh canvas. Okay. So that's very hopeful, very creative. And we have the moon. Okay. So just be careful that you don't get delusional or caught up in too many emotions or caught up in the idea like, oh, I'm going to start new with this person and everything's going to be great and they're drinking champagne and it's all feels good. The moon changes signs every two and a half days. These, this is not going to be permanent here. So you may, you may be trying to um, work something out, but please don't fool yourself. Please accept the information that's coming from you for you. Please accept the heeding of the message that there's a change coming. And so if you think that you can distract yourself from it or that you can believe someone's false promises that things are going to be different, I can assure you that it's it will not last. Okay. I'm sorry to be so intense about it. Um, this was coming through pretty intensely before I started this reading and I got to pile number three and I thought, all right, maybe, maybe, maybe that's not the case, but, but, it, but it is the case. Okay. I'm going to pull a couple extra cards. Is there anything else you need to know right now? You've got the two of pentacles. One more. Anything else you need to know right now? The four of fire elder. Okay, so the two of pentacles trying to weigh things out. Um, there's kind of a storm brewing in the back. 
He's got one foot up in the air. So stay grounded in these choices and these relationships. And the four of fire elder, elders and immune protection blend. Okay. And there's, there's a reference to a saint in the background. Call in your guides, call in your helpers, call in your protection. I'm not saying like, this is like actual, like physical, I'm seeing a need for energetic protection. Okay. So call in the helpers. If you work, like a lot of times I'll diffuse on guard essential oil. It's the oil of boundaries and the oil of protection. And that's the kind of thing I'm seeing for you. So working with um, protective energy, uh, kind of getting over the idea that you are under someone else's thumb or that you have to stay under someone else's thumb financial for financial reasons. All the cards are heating you to move on, to take the world in your hands and move forward and that you will be moving into blessings. Watch your words. Do not fight because that is just going to make this more intense. Stand in your power and do not be distracted by momentary fun or momentary promises or momentary goodness because um, the death card will always win. Okay. And the change will come and it's better to surrender to the change than to fight it because it will just lead to exhaustion. Okay. All right. I'm going to pull a few letters. Let's see what we get. Looking for words, places, uh, initials. Of course, the first word I see is cries. There may be some tears, but that's okay. It's part of the process. I've got... What do I got? I got a Q and a U. I got the word clue. Clue. Who cries? I've got the word gone. And I've got the word hive. And um, a Y and an R. You're going to have to see if you can make anything out of this or if this is anybody's initials you know. I'll leave these here for you. And so I've got the word clue, gone, hives, and cries. Okay, I'm going to take a picture. And yeah, I, I really think this transformation can bring you to a very, very good place and into your power. And what more could we want than that? Okay, so have a great month ahead. Thank you for joining me.